Uh, patch 13.6 notes. Uh, let's check it out. I believe this is going to be... Um, I don't know if we're going to have one more patch uh, before, of course, MSI. I believe we, we, will, we might be able to squeeze one more patch. The awkward thing, though, is that a lot of the leagues will play on 13.6 and then qualify on 13.6 and then play 13.7. So I doubt that 13.7 is going to be extensive. I doubt this patch is going to be extensive. Uh, let's have a look. No Gragas changes. No Rakan. No Olaf. Bro, the game is not going to change at all with these changes. But let's see the buffs. Let's see the buffs. Milio, we already talked about Milio. Milio. Last patch, Ash was nerfed for support, and the goal was to preserve her power levels in ADC. We were mostly successful in hitting these goals, but she's still a bit worse off. So here's us making good on that promise. Damage against frosted enemies. Oh, that's that's decent. Uh, that's 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 a decent buff. Uh, keep in mind, guys, you should really try buying Infinity Edge on Ash. Really, really try it. It's very nice. Already on Soul. E cooldown increased. Art upgrade status requirement increased. CC duration decreased. Cast range decreased. Oh, that sounds... That's rough. That is not really a good reasoning, Lucy's Leon, because Ash's scaling with crit chance is linear. So it's like, it doesn't really matter. So it doesn't matter that she doesn't reach 100% crit. It really doesn't matter. Uh, Already on Soul. Uh, e cooldown decree increased. Okay. Well, that's that's a nerf, yeah. Uh, this is also a nerf. Like, I think it will be so much harder to have this ult ready for every Drake. Like, you are kind of, like, squeezing it in there. Uh, falling star stun duration, one second. Falling car cast range. Wow, that's pretty big nerf. Damn, this is a big nerf for Aurelion Soul, guys. I, I say so because I didn't think he was that OP in the first place. Uh, Dr. Mundo, base health regeneration increased, health regeneration scaling decreased, W recast timer decreased, E damage to jungle monster increased. Base health, health region scaling, okay. This is like more for early early, early like lane, right? It's like if, if an item has percentage health region like rejuvenation bead, then it like is slightly better in early game. Recast timer, oh this is pretty nice, honestly. This is nice. I've been in moments where I wanted to double tap W and I couldn't. Uh, this is cool. Damage to jungle monsters. This is fucking scary, dude. Why are they buffing Mundo's clay speed? Mundo clay speed is already nutty bombastic. So I don't know about this. Uh, but it's like the fact that his clay speed is already nutty bombastic. It's like this type of buff doesn't matter because it's like he can't become... Hypersonic, you know, it doesn't matter if uh, he clears faster than he's already clearing, you know? Might have some small differences when you are invading, let's, let's say you do 3 camp into invade and the enemy is like level 2 and maybe you do something like that, maybe. I'm not so sure, like Mundo wants to drop low when he clears. I, I don't see how this is going to make Dr. Mundo more interesting though. Galio, Shield of Durand, Magic Damage Reduction to 25, Physical Damage Reduction 2.5. E justice punch okay also it has better scaling okay i saw this thing that galio play uh, there's a galio player that um, is maxing w in lane and then just because his shield is so big it's like if your shield doesn't crack the it re your shell shield rejuvenates in six seconds instead of 12 and i've seen like this galio with w max it's like if, if there's something that i'm thinking about is like i don't know if there's room to play galio support into rakan Maybe that's something that we might see. But in terms of mid, I don't see how this changes the problems that Galio has. Galio is just reliant on what the meta is around him. When I think of Galio, it's like played with Camille, played with Kindred maybe, you know? I, I don't... This doesn't get me super excited. But maybe there's room for Galio to be played in the support position, and maybe this W Galio has some kind of... Uh, Dankness to it. Talon base mana increased, passive base damage increased, AD ratio increased, W mana cost decreased. Oh, this is pretty decent. This is not bad at all. This is a pretty. This is this is nice. It's like when I think of uh, Talon's play pattern, I don't mind this. I don't mind this at all. But will it will it be seen competitive because of this? No, we won't. It's like it's just a solo queue buff. It's like this champion, you know, got nerfed when Roms were nerfed. It's like. Yeah, it is what it is. I don't mind it, you know? Vayne. 
passive bonus movement speed increased, Q bonus damage increased, and power attack duration decreased, W damage adjusted. Bonus move speed 45. What the fuck? So what, she has 375 move speed without boots when she runs towards you. 330. 375 move speed without boots. 3 second empowered attack duration. Oh no. You know, the reason this is so significant, guys, is that this empowered attack duration, it allows you to tumble quicker, you know? In, in, in the past, you were forced to auto in order to tumble again. W. Okay. Well, th this, this is nice and all, but I think you just max Q, man. Just max Q, really. Max Q. Like, I'm thinking Essence Reaver, guys. Essence Reaver. I'm thinking Sheet Bow, Essence Reaver, bang, bang, bang. This is nuts, by the way. This is to top lane vein, guys. V top lane vein sounds really annoying to play against. This, you just max Q, guys. I don't know if Vayne is back bot, guys. This doesn't really help her Vayne bot problems, in my opinion. Maybe you can play Vayne bot into like some specific all-in lanes. Like maybe you can play Vayne into like Zeri, maybe. No, like the, the issue is she just has too hard of a time controlling the lane. So she needs to... No, Milio, Milio Vayne would be too shit. Like, Milio lane phase would be garbage, I'm sure. I think Milio needs to be carried by strong AD, I'm sure. But yeah, I think this is more for Vayne top, guys. This is just Vayne top. And it's funny, it's like they, they buff Galio. <laughs> they buff Vayne. <laughs> Sucks to be Galio. Vagar. Base armor down. Well, this is decent. I important. W damage down. Oh, this is a big nerf, guys. This is a big nerf. Considering most cases you max this last, you know, you're gonna feel this. Like this having more damage, like fucking five more damage at max rank. No one gives a shit about this. Three armor down also matters. Uh, this is fine nerf. Like, I think usually if, if Vega is getting blind picked, probably something is wrong with the game, I think. So I don't mind Vega being nerfed. Q cooldown decreased. Uh, Q cooldown at all ranks. Q cooldown decreased. Mana cost increased. Unattached missile speed. Enhanced missile speed. Max range. Okay. This was important. Overheal shield duration. Best front bonuses resistances gone. Okay. Alright. Good nerf. But, right games, right games, right games. You have to accept at some point, right, that if you want to make a champion that is untargetable, either it's going to be trolled to pick, or it's going to be too annoying to play against. Fuck this design. Either it's going to be troll, because it's too weak, or too frustrating to play against. Alright, Bloodthirster. Alright. Thank God. <laughs> Deserved nerf. Nasher's Tooth. Ability haste for cost. Fuck you, Katarina. Fuck you, Katarina. We want Azir players to buy this item. <laughs> so 50% attack speed, 100 AP, 15 ability haste. That's not too shabby of a stat line. Who buys Nash's Tooth, guys? So we have Diana, Katarina, Azir potentially now, AP Varus, Gwen sometimes. This is pretty nice for Gwen, honestly. This is pretty nice for Gwen. This this sounds very nice for Gwen, yeah. I think Morde buys it too rarely. Uh, Kale is one, yeah. Kale is one, yeah. That's fair. Try to think of like which, which champions are benefited from this costing 200. I, I think it's rare where I wouldn't want to trade 200, 200 AP for 15 ability haste. It's very rare. I think the only case that I would think about is Katarina. Yeah, AP Twitch is dead, yeah. AP Twitch got really nerfed the other patch. I don't remember which one. I think Gwen and Azir are the standouts for me when I think of this item. Definitely. Navori Quick Blades? Uh, okay. 15% to 12%. I think uh, this item definitely deserved a nerf. I this, this turned into become... Like, this just became a heavy just buy this item... And there was no decision behind it, you know? There's no real decision behind Navori or, or Ai. And I think that the Spellcaster ADs are just uh, really, really uh, just overperforming right now in the meta. Legend Bloodline. 
Bloodline is the most picked ADC rune in the Legend slot by far and contributes to ADCs being generally tanky instead of opting into derivative when it's needed. The rune is meant to be a choice, not automatic. Life steal per stack, max health on 15 stacks. Wait, what? Wait, what? I didn't know you got health. I had no clue you got health. I had no idea. New effect. At maximum legend stacks, gain 100 bonus health. Not gonna lie, I really didn't know this. I... I must have missed this. That is crazy, guys. I am alacrity enjoyer with BT buy, so... I guess it will be more of a choice. Similar to Bloodline, Lethal Temper is the most picked rune for ADCs by a long shot, which makes it a good target for removing power from the roll at large. There's some champions where they never give up, give up this level of attack speed and it's understandable, but for everyone else there's more than just one viable keystone out there. Attack speed for range users. Max at level 12, max at 18. Ooh, that stings. That really stings. That is a big nerf. Damn, son. That is a big nerf. Okay. Uh, okay, they're nerfing Drakes. Bonus ability is an attack speed. Thank God, man. Hextech soul base slow. Alright. Bonus AD and AP, 5. I like that Chemtech Drake is not changed at all. <laughs> Alright, well this, this patch was quite like underwhelming, I'm not gonna lie. It's like the fact that there's no Gragas changes, no um like Sejuani, like Sejuani not getting nerfed, like I'm sick and tired of seeing Sejuani. The 80 carries that are being played, if you think of Zeri, Zaya, and so forth, they did get a big nerf in this patch. Like, we shouldn't underestimate that, so this definitely can shake things up in that position. I'm surprised at Road of Ages. Road of Ages and, uh, like, Road of Ages is not touched at all. So I think mid lane meta is basically, it's like, pick a champion that does well with Road of Ages. You know? I think that's like the majority of it. But maybe they're happy to have the game in that spot. I feel like you shouldn't nerf Vi. I think Vi's issue is more the symptoms of what is the issue of jungle. That you just get away with too much. And hopefully like we will see more like invade prone uh, situations. Maybe nerf Sion. Maybe nerf Sion, guys. And then yeah, I'm, I'm surprised... I'm also surprised that Annie is not nerfed. Annie is unchanged. Rakan unchanged. I got to me is 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 dank. Draven as well, yeah. Draven definitely deserves nerfs in my opinion. I think Draven is just a Draven is a tough pickle because in my mind either it's OP or it's useless. There's no in between. It's like you need to in my mind reward this whole champion. I think Draven is okay. Not at elite level, because all the agency is in the hand of Draven. I think uh, we can do this next, guys. Uh